As you can see, a double horn is consisting of two different length instruments in B flat and F, and there is a lot of cylindrical tubing, which is necessary because without having cylindrical tubing, you can't get the slides in and out, and you have the two different sets of slides, one above the other. You can see it's quite a pretty instrument. It's very well balanced, and as far as instruments go, it's sort of mid-weight. It's a professional instrument. The mouth pipe goes straight into the valve which switches between F and B flat. Some horns have that valve actually a bit later on in the tubing, but Alexander horns have them here. And that's basically, you know, F tubing with the valves. And as you press the valves down, the valve inside turns around on a cylinder and directs the airflow down through the valves. This is a Viennese instrument which you've probably seen the Vienna Philharmonic play. And this instrument is actually older than Miami. So it's from Genossenschaft in Vienna. It's over 100 years old. And they haven't changed at all in design. This was based on a natural horn and it's only in F. It's not a double horn at all. The crook is detachable. This is because um, this goes back to the natural horn days where you could change the crook to a different length and make it, for example, into a B-flat horn. I also have the tubing for a B-flat version of this instrument. As you can see, the valves are very special. As the air gets put into this, the valve section, it gets diverted like uh, when you put your hand in, in the way of air when you put it outside of the window of the car, the air gets diverted into the car. This is the sort of arrangement that it has inside the valves, that it diverts the air down through the tubing and then back up again to the main tubing. They move fairly quickly. For most orchestral repertoire, the, the, the movement is, is certainly fast enough. And also, as modern players have proven, there's not much difference in speed. Okay, maybe convenience, but um, it's certainly a manageable instrument. The the F horn has mostly conical tubing. There's only a middle section where the valve section is, which is cylindrical, and it's certainly a lot lighter. This is the hand position I was taught when I le learned in Vienna. It's very practical. It leaves the sound to come out of the bell a lot, and you tend to play um, with a very open sound. It's very handy for hand stopping and other things like that. With the, with the double horn, you can hear from the hitting of the bell, which I, I don't really recommend, because if you do it too hard, you can dent your instrument, but you can hear here that this is a very um, typical double horn kind of build, where you hear a clang and a resonance to the sound of the bell on the Viennese instrument when you hit it, which I shouldn't really do with this instrument, but here we go. It's a very dead sound. There's hardly any vibration at all, even when you're playing. So, you know, it's, it just goes to show that it's not the, the movement of the instrument itself, it's the air column which is being vibrated. The clunts around the bell, which is very nicely engraved, uh, with a, an inventory number of 386 on it here, which uh, somebody engraved many decades ago, is not the speed of the Intel processor which is attached to it, but something to do with the inventory of the orchestra. It's a very light instrument, very practical to use. Uh, to be honest, it was an absolute pleasure to play. The bell size is slightly smaller, as you can see, than an Alexander horn. It's a very average bell size for a modern horn, the Alexander, so the Vienna horns are much smaller, and as you can see from the taper, it starts a bit narrower and gets wider a, a bit more quickly. And it's very well balanced. The crook moves if you want it to, but it's very stable, and the valves work wonderfully. That's it really. If you have any questions, just drop me a line and I'll explain things in more detail. Thank you.